To the Republic of Me. My name is Ivana, and this is a channel where I share my creative journey and some parts of my life living on an island in the Mediterranean. Good morning. Hi, welcome. I was just thinking that uh, because usually at the beginning of my videos I put um, like this intro, welcome to the Republic of me, my name is Ivana and so on, that uh, okay that's enough, I don't need, need to introduce myself. But then I was just thinking, I was like, but there is, uh, there is quite, a new, quite a few new people coming uh, to channel from video to video and uh, maybe every couple of episodes I should really give uh, in a proper introduction if not a full background. But um, hi, my name is Ivana and uh, this is a channel, uh, it's really my, my vlog, but it's primarily about fiber arts, about knitting and spinning. I do paint, so occasionally you will see my painting as well. And, uh, and I do show a lot of uh, my garden, that seems to be the thing, because this is the vlog. This is my vlog. It's um, it's the things that I do on daily basis and uh, gardening and maybe fi mainly fiber arts are the main thing that I do day to day. So uh, if you're here for knitting and spinning and weaving, actually as well, you're in the right place if you like it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm recording. Uh, I'm in Cyprus which is an island in Eastern Mediterranean. I'm Serbian though. I was born uh, and raised in Belgrade, Serbia. However, it was Yugoslavia at that time. However, we moved here when I was 13, so I'm um, 44 now. It's gonna be, uh, oh my God, 31 years now. So, yeah, so welcome. If you're new, welcome. And uh, if you're not new, welcome back. I was not, um, I didn't think that I was going to record this, uh, this vlog because lately I've been trying to record every two weeks, although that might even get uh, to every week, but I'm not sure about that. I, it, it really depends on the schedule. Give me a sec. Mm. I was not, I was not going to, um, I was thinking maybe not to record this, uh, this video for this Sunday because the past two weeks have been quite hectic. It was just one thing after another. Um, my younger son's school was uh, finishing so he had final exams and in this case he did need my help. I don't tend to study with my kids but in this case he did my help so I was sitting with him for a week every night and uh, and we were doing the studies and uh, now my stepsons are coming from uh, Finland so one arrived yesterday and my husband went uh, to pick up uh, the, the younger one uh, now from the airport so it's, I've been all over the place but because I have this uh, you know one two hours uh, while he's at the airport I thought maybe uh, maybe I can record an episode uh, and I want to talk about gift knitting and the reason why I wanted to talk about gift knitting and record an episode because this thing arrived that I ordered a couple of weeks ago it's um, one ball of drop sky in uh, black color and I needed that because um, making my sister asked me it's her 50th birthday in November and she asked me 
couple of months ago. She saw one jumper that I was wearing, which was knitted out of this yarn. If I can uh, make her a jumper for her birthday. And I started doing so. So normally for me and for my sister and for my mom, because we are kind of similar size, um, var variations are there, I mean a bit here and there, but we are more or less similar, similar size. And I need four and a half balls of uh, this yarn. But that's because until now I made for myself and I made for my mom, but I tend to make for me and for my mom, we both like these kind of shorter sleeves, like bracelet kind of sleeves. And I needed four and a half balls. However, my sister, she likes long sleeves. So as I started knitting the, the jumper, even though I had four and a half balls left, but she wanted uh, longer sleeves, I ran out. I ran out here. So this one is done. And the whole uh, body of the jumper is done. But... I ran out here so I needed uh, I needed one uh, well just a fraction of uh, of another ball because this has uh, this has very good meterage let me see oh I didn't bring my glasses it's 190 meters which is 207 yards per 50 grams because it's this uh, chain net construction and it's very lightweight and has um, has very good yardage so I'm not going to use a lot out of uh, this ball, but I want uh, I want to finish this um, this jumper now, and that kind of brought me um, ah. But before I do that, uh, before I tell you something else, because I didn't want to order just uh, just one ball, and I love this yarn. I love the the way that this jumper fits on me, and I already have four and a half balls of. Um, this color which I have knitted for my mom last year and uh, it's a beautiful color and it's a beautiful jumper it fits her lovely so I already have four and a half balls of that that stayed from her jumper because I had nine skeins nine balls so I'm going to make that one for myself but liking this yarn so much and ordering this ball I did I didn't want to just order one so I ordered another two sweater quantities five balls of each of um, white which is kind of creamy creamy white but white none, nonetheless um, like off-white so I ordered uh, enough uh, for to make a jumper for myself uh, sweater uh, for myself in this color and also this beautiful green so they're all the same base is that focusing um, they're all the same base and I ordered this oh, my cat is meowing um, I ordered this from uh, Again, I forgot last last time I told you, it's Winnie the Wool Wagon, I think, in uh, in Ireland. Simply because we are in EU, so I don't have to pay duties. And I know Wool Warehouse in UK, they have a lot of drops yarn, but uh, I have to pay um, input duties when I order from them. I speak about that in the last uh, in the last video because some of the companies I actually don't have to pay duties when it comes to UK after Brexit and uh, as far as yarn is concerned one of them is Lovecrafts but um, there are some other ones as well not just for yarn that somehow they do something and I don't have to pay the duties but um, for my other yarn I kind of have to shift and uh, look for European suppliers unless I want to I'm willing to pay uh, VAT and tax so this arrived so this arrives so I can finish uh, Tamara's jumper and you might be wondering why I'm knitting, uh, why I'm knitting it uh, now. Well, that's why I wanted to talk about gift knitting and I actually have a list here of the things that, um, that I want to, yes, forget. 
I don't know if the camera, the, the audio is picking that up, but I'm sure the cat is uh, meowing because I closed the... Actually, give me a second. I'm going to open the door. Maybe he wants to go out. Hey, yeah, I, uh, I took him outside because I have the doors closed, even though it's really hot. And uh, it's getting really hot in Cyprus now the past couple of days. So, but I have the doors closed, uh, so you know the the noise from outside doesn't um, doesn't bother bother the audio. So you may be asking why I'm uh, why I'm knitting uh, the jumper now. Well, the way that I approach gift knitting and gifts in general, and that's just lately been like that. I used to do it long before as well but then there was a period in my life when I was extremely busy and then I was just buying last minute gifts but for the past couple of years the way that I do it is at the very beginning of the year I make two lists so I make a list of all the birthdays that you know of close family I mean, of uh, family and close friends that I know that I would be um, that I would be buying a present for. So I make a list in chronological order and the date when it is, and I also make a list for Christmas, and that is done in January. So I make a list for birthdays for the whole year, and uh, one for Christmas of all the people that we give Christmas presents to. And that is usually the family, my parents, Mario's mom, my sister, her husband, my brother-in-law, his wife, uh, the kids, you know, nieces, nephews, but I do make the list. And then when I look at the list, I kind of like, if I already have certain ideas that I want to make something for that person, I already jot it down of what I'm thinking to make. Or if I have decided and it doesn't always have to be for making um, even if I uh, find something throughout the year that I really think to buy that I really think that person would like I, I buy it and then I keep it like for example I brought here my niece's my sister's daughter her birthday is um, she's 23 I think her birthday is in July and I bought her in January. I saw this leather bag that I thought that she would like, and I got it. I got it for her. So I, you know, I wrote next to her birthday, you know, leather bag. I ticked it off and I just stored it because I thought she would like it. You know, there was no reason to wait for later on when her birthday comes. And more so with making, and the reason why I think that is a great way to approach it is that to kind of make a plan at the very beginning of the year because then I don't have to rush and for me giving handmade gifts is not I don't see the point of giving a handmade gift just to give a handmade, handmade gift so I don't tend to leave it until the end and I was like, oh, I have to knit all the hats so simply I can give them a handmade gift. I might as well buy them. So I kind of find the perfect project that I think in that moment they need or that they would like. And um, I make a plan and I knit throughout the year or weave or um, what, uh, what have you. So that's how, um, that's how I approach, uh, that's how I approach that. And it's been working out great so far. Last year, I knitted so many socks and uh, men's sizes, like two pairs each for my stepsons, for my both brother-in-laws. Uh, for I knitted so many socks, but because the men's size, obviously, you know that they take longer, and two pairs each, um, I spread them throughout the year because I knew that that's what I was going to do. So since I spread them throughout the year, I wasn't in a panic. I was just working at them with no problem. And now when I finished, I'm at as, uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so now when I finished, I'm at a jumper. 
I'm going to be done. So I'm going to fold it, put it in the cupboard and, cupboard and have it ready for November when it's, uh, when it's her birthday and she's gonna have uh, exactly what she wanted. The, this year I started with, uh, as far as making, my first project was a gift net. It, uh, I don't have it and I posted it on Instagram just recently because I, I'm not very good uh, with Instagram. I don't go off and I spend maybe, I would say less than 10 minutes a day on Instagram. And uh, I, don't, I know that's shocking for a lot of people, but I don't tend to, so not only do I not scroll a lot, I don't post a lot. And um, I would like to do that. So that's maybe something that I'm gonna pay attention to. I would like to post more simply also for the channel, for you guys, and also to kind of uh, keep documenting because that's the easy way to document uh, the projects that I do. So I started the, the year with uh, gift knit socks that I, I don't have with me. I think I have some footage. They were made for my mom's best friend uh, in Belgrade. And uh, so this is a 70 year old woman that um, I made her socks uh, last year and uh, she, uh, she really loved them. So uh, I know that, and they were house socks. So I combined um, Drops Flora, which is not uh, really a sock yarn. So it doesn't have um, nylon. However, I combined it uh, with mohair because I knew that they were going to be uh, house socks and they were, oh my God, so soft. I, I, think, I think I have footage, footage if I didn't um, insert it yet. So the plans, the plans for the rest of the year as far as gift knitting is, uh, after, after I finish weaving, I'm weaving, I've been weaving for some time now, uh, one shawl for myself, uh, which is in, uh, uh, out of my hand spun yarn and uh, merino and yak base. It's in green shades and I have some beige as well and uh, I'm still working on that. I didn't, I was focusing more on knitting and because we went on a trip recently for a couple of weeks. So I'm still working on that. When I finish that, I want to put on the loom for my sister-in-law. Uh, her birthday is in August. And I want to weave her a shawl. She has this thing for years. She's been showing me stuff um, in this uh, kind of uh, mustard color. And I want to, she likes that color, but I have never seen her wear it. Maybe she didn't find pieces that, uh, that, she, want, that she actually bought that, that suited her or whatever, but she likes that color. So I have this yarn. I have more of this yarn, but this is uh, my hand spun, which I combined with uh, brushed uh, alpaca silk when I was plying it. So it's a strand of my um, uh, merino, hand spun merino, and I have plied it with brushed alpaca silk in uh, curry colorway. I think, uh, um, yeah, it's from Drops. By the way, this episode is not sponsored by Drops. However, these are the things that I have at the moment. <laughs> and this one, um, uh, this one has uh, Drops brushed alpaca silk. And I have, I have quite a few of these uh, skeins. So I thought that might be a nice uh, touch. I knitted a jumper for my niece last year, this color, and she liked it. Um, so, I'm either going to make a shawl that is going to be fully this color and maybe put some gray base for the warp. I have to see that yet. I will have enough if I want to do that. So knowing that she likes that color, she can always have that as an accessory. Or I can pair it and make like um, plaid uh, pair it maybe with uh, some dark green um, 
and have majority of this mustard color and just maybe one stripe um, occasional um, like this of this uh, dark green I'm not sure but that is uh, that is the plan so after I finish uh, the show that I'm uh, that I'm weaving for myself then after that I have my mom she's in September don't know why this is give me a sec and we're back my uh, memory card was full I charged uh, the camera I charged the camera before I started recording to make sure that I have battery and uh, this is the first time ever that uh, my my memory got full because I usually keep it quite clean I record and I transfer straight away but that's what happened so I looked at uh, where we uh, where I stopped and it was about my mom uh, my mom's birthday is in uh, September and she told me she wanted, she didn't say she wanted it for her birthday, but um, at the end, um, sometime last year, uh, I don't remember exactly when, I knitted this jumper for myself. Um, I'm not going to put it on. It's very hot or maybe I can for a second. Um, okay, I'll put it on. Uh, I knitted it out of my, it was self-drafted, out of my handspun uh, Polworth. And if I boil, it's, it's your fault. <laughs> no. Okay, so. So I knitted this jumper with, uh, it's raglan with braids. Um, for myself sometime last year and my mom uh, when she saw it she said I want one just like that I want a jumper like that and you see what I'm telling you about uh, bracelet sleeves not all of them are bracelet sleeves that I knit but most of them are because I do like to wear bracelets or even three quarters um, so she said I want one exactly like this so I'm thinking to uh, bec uh, because my hand spun yarn um, usually ends up being like worsted or Aran weight actually worsted I use uh, five millimeter needles for it that seems to be my default and uh, so it's not going to be a very slow knit I, I can I can knit her jumper until September the what uh, so that can be for her birthday and she's watching these videos so it's gonna be no surprise and I'm gonna speak to her about it what she prefers the issue is that when she was uh, when she was younger she had pitch black hair completely black uh, but now, because she doesn't dye her hair, her hair is gray, very light gray. She tries to stay away from light colors because she likes to have some contrast between her face and uh, with what she's wearing. So she, I could knit her something in gray, but it would have to be darker gray. But what I'm thinking is uh, I'll speak to her, obviously, to see what uh, she wants because I don't have hand spun uh, gray. I don't have enough uh, of that quantity. I would have to, it would have to be commercial yarn. But what I was thinking, because she does love green, she loves muted green, this kind of um, olive um, um, army green. I do have this hand spun. And uh, this is a blend of, um, I have about 400 grams of that. This is a blend of merino, which is the green, and uh, these uh, brownish parts are natural color colored llama. It's very soft, it's very beautiful. So if she chooses this one, 
then I can knit her this jumper in that and if I run out of yarn it's not going to be a lot of yarn I can spin another skein until then but I do have enough to start and if not uh, not to finish the, the whole jumper as well so I'll speak to her what she wants and uh, if she agrees then uh, yeah this is uh, this uh, jumper this model is going to be for her birthday I'm gonna take this off now I'm sorry In the last uh, in the last video, I told you that uh, I like uh, simple clothes. However, um, and I speak about it that I just tend to wear uh, very simple turtleneck uh, turtlenecks without much design, or a boat neck, uh, whether it's store bought or knitted. But for the summer, I tend to inherit my uh, kids' uh, t-shirts and this is, uh, this is one of them. So when they grow out of, uh, when they grow out of their t-shirts, I tend to have them. So uh, I wear a bunch of superheroes sometimes and uh, one time they told me, Mom, you know this YouTuber? I said, what YouTuber? He goes, I think his name is Bazinga or something like that. I was like, no. Because why are you wearing his t-shirt? I said that was yours <laughs> from a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I took uh, I took their t-shirts. I was wear apparently wearing merch of some uh, YouTuber. But yeah, okay. So if you needed to know that, but since I kind of removed the jumper, let me see now what else. Um, yeah, so that's for my mom. Uh, then in November, I have my brother-in-law who kind of lovingly complained that I have never knitted him a jumper. That's my sister's husband. That everybody had knitted jumpers because when we were traveling to Mykonos, uh, it was him, my sister, um, Mario and me. Ma Mario is my husband. And we were all in the airport, and the three of us had a knitting jumper, knitted jumper, except him. He goes to me, what is this? Because you all have knitted jumpers, and I still wear these, you know, <laughs> from, from the store. I said, okay, I'll make you one. Uh, so I plan to, to knit a jumper for, uh, for him for November. I, I'm not sure yet what yarn I'm going to use. It's probably not going to be fingering. It's probably going to be a worsted weight uh, jumper for the like needles, um, like five millimeter. And there is this one that I like um, that I knitted for my husband. I always forget the name. I showed it again in the last video. I'll put the name um, somewhere here. And uh, so I'm probably going to knit him uh, that, uh, that pattern. So that's for him. And last week, my niece, well, Mario's niece, my husband's niece, but my niece as well, she also kind of, she said, oh, I like these woolly, woolly kind of uh, jumpers. And, um, and I said, okay, I, uh, I can make you one. And her birthday is in January. So I'm planning to knit for her as well. But everything seems to be kind of spaced out, um, enough for me not to stress too much. Now, most of those people, well, all of those people are very knitworthy. And um, there are some people that I have knitted in the past, particularly last year, that I've realized that they're not knitworthy and um, I mean, they're not worthy of me spending that much time uh, working on something, so they're off my list for, for this year and onwards. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the plan, but I do want to show you as, uh, as the last thing, something I've been working on from the beginning of the year. This is a Christmas present. It's a brioche blanket. And I've shown it before, but I want you to see to um, how it grew. Now, this uh, blanket, it's, uh, 
a simple brioche stitch, so it's quite easy for me because I knit continental. And uh, the yarn that I'm using is, a, I made a three ply of, um, okay, so two strands are my hand spun. One is brown merino, the other one is brown Shetland and silk. And then I have plied those two with white mohair. And uh, this is how the blanket is uh, coming out. I'll bring it closer so you can see the fabric. For me, this is stunning. These are my colors. This is my comfort zone. Even though lately I have uh, kind of, um, I'm experimenting a bit uh, with some other colors as well, but this is my home. This is where I find the most comfort and the most joy. Um, and it's growing. So if I stand up, it's now the blanket is touching the floor. So I think another, much like this, it's, um, okay, let me see how wide it is. It's, uh, it's almost my uh, wingspan. So it's for a single person, but it's a couch blanket, but wide enough that you could really wrap yourself in it and uh, snuggle up. So if I work on this, I don't work on this all the time. Um, I'm definitely going to finish it until, uh, until Christmas. But I wanted to show you the progress because obviously this takes, um, this takes a long time. It's a long-term project. And that's that. Those are the plans for my gift making this year. On that list that I have, there are also some, uh, there are also some uh, gifts that I'm going to buy or that I already have, that I have uh, filled. But it's a very... Um, I fully suggest that you do that from next year. It's a very good way to to not panic when uh, with gifts, whether they are handmade or. Um, oh hi, Jake. Let me just show you my other cat. I have a ginger one who is. Uh, he's so bad, so naughty. He always he draws blood daily. But this is Jake, and uh, he's a sweetheart. He's um, he's quite old. Um, can't tell you exactly how old, but uh, yeah, he's losing his hair now because uh, they're changing for the summer. Okay, I'll let you down, I'll let you down. Go, go. Not on the blanket. <laughs> he's lovely. Whenever, whenever I'm not well, whenever I have a migraine and um, he curls up next to me and he just stays there. So he sits next to my head. Now I have all his hair everywhere and he kind of pushes me with his head, you know, on my forehead and he licks my, he licks my head and he's just really, really lovely. We have this other one, ginger one, which is very beautiful and very soft. We found him as well, but we are all afraid of him. It's like he draws blood daily. He thinks he's a tiger. Um, big difference uh, in, in character. Um, so back to the, to the gifts. Yeah, I try it. If you feel stressed with gift making or with uh, buying gifts, um, this is, I really think this is a good, uh, good idea. Start January, make two lists, one for birthdays, one for Christmas, and then just start filling up the gaps and you have the whole overview of uh, what gifts you need as you're buying them throughout the year because that also I think it's uh, easier on the budget as well because rather than spending everything just in one time uh, spending so much money just before Christmas you buy them throughout the year and also not only being easier on the budget but y that way I can um, make sure that I have really nice gifts and not just buy or make in order just to buy or make in order just to have a present. But I can really um, have that special something that is 
really meant for that person. So it's just how I approach things, but I thought I, uh, it would be a good thing to share um, because, okay, I think it's time to stop because somebody's either trying to get in the house, one of the animals, or trying to get out. Um, okay, thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye for now. Here with me, a house upon the hill, and a little apple tree. The sun is shining through every window pane. It's bathing you in light, so why should I complain? If there should ever.